And we are live. So welcome to Project Vayner, episode 43. It's the fourth uh, live episode that I'm doing. And uh, today we have uh, today we have a guest from uh, USA. It's uh, a guy that has his own YouTube channel with uh, 1,500 subscribers and. He does a lot of videos uh, and uh, put a lot of time into editing those videos. Um, we got in contact pretty uh, recently, yesterday actually. Uh, but without further ado, uh, here is uh, Ethan Ulrich. Hi, my name is Ethan or Master ETH. I make analysis videos on YouTube. I have a series called Gems of the Internet, where I find gems of the internet because I'm great at finding titles for series. But basically, the whole point of what I do is like finding these amazing things that not a lot of people know about and just telling more people about them. Basically, that's kind of like mm -hmm. the direction that I'm going towards. So that's kind of what I do. And then I also, uh, for my business, I edit videos for other people, like YouTubers and streamers and stuff like that. So, yeah. Right. Cool. So, how how long has have you had your uh, YouTube channel? <laughs> this is an interesting question. I mean, I've technically had it since like 2011, but I didn't start posting until like 2016. Mm. But those videos in 2016. Were not were not great and they they were not what i'm doing now because you know when you first start you don't know what you're doing you're just doing whatever so yeah you need to test out some stuff in the beginning also to find oh, yeah, your fair. style and what you want to mm -hmm. do yeah, and figure out why you're doing it which took me a while to yeah. to figure it out you know i just think it's mm -hmm. interesting how how much my perspective has really changed with with YouTube over the years. Cause mm -hmm. a lot of, I don't want to like put anybody on the spot, but I've realized this recently where YouTube is like me tube in a way where everybody's like, watch me mm. watch my blog kind of thing. But yeah, I, I don't really like that. That's why I kind of like to go along the road of like finding things that people make and then like informing people about it. So it's not about me we're all like collectively looking at this thing together and like figuring out why it's so good. And I do like that kind of content more anyways, which is what kind of why I do it, but I really mm. enjoy it. So. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's great. I, I usually hear a lot like, uh, when I'm trying to grow my channel and mm. tips about how I should do it. And there's always someone, telling me to like reach out to people and do more collaboration and yeah. work with others. And uh, that's one of the reasons I started with these live episodes mm -hmm. uh, because it's both for the subscribers that are watching that yeah. how they can get some value from it. But also it's like a learning experience for me and a, a yeah. chance to connect with other creators and learn right. from them. So. And I think yeah. everyone is like doing it differently. So there's always mm -hmm. something that you can learn. That's very true. Yeah. Um, I never want to get to a place where it's like, I, I, I'm guilty of this. I, I, there is some point in my life more recently where I got to a point. It's like, nah, I don't need to listen to Gary V. Like I know what mm -hmm. I'm doing. But then I, I watched some more Gary V recently. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I still need to learn some stuff. So it's that perspective of always yeah. learning something new like mm -hmm. always trying to grow yourself in some way which is yeah. one reason why i kind of not push myself but just try to stretch myself creatively any way i can which mm -hmm. is why it took me a month to make this video that's releasing wednesday because it's entirely green screen for one and it's like almost a 15 minute video it's like four pages mm -hmm. of script it just but i'm right. super proud of it and it's it's gonna be my best video for a long time so but it's just I had to do it. Like I had all these scenes in my head yeah. that were entirely green screen. I'm like, how am I going to do this? And then I did it. I'm like, oh, wow, uh -huh. that's cool. So, but yeah, and collaborations are also another good way 
because just talking to other creative people helps in general, mm-hmm. especially when it can feel like lonely sometimes when it's like, oh, I'm the only one doing this. No, you just need to find the right people, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually, that happened to me Sunday because I went to a YouTuber meetup uh, that Audrey Ember hosted in Chicago, mm-hmm. and that was really fun. I connected with a lot of people there, which connections are like the most important thing when it comes to like smaller creators and just like community in general. So, yeah. Um, I I really agree on uh, trying to stay curious and to push yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I I can feel sometimes that, like, for example, when I'm doing uh, this vlog that I'm kind of doing templates that I want to reuse and I do stuff Mm -hmm. to make it easier for myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, to save time and that's good in one way but also i think you need to always when you're doing a video trying to try something new Mm -hmm. uh, trying to stay curious and uh, and keep learning and you will never have you will never feel like that you're perfectly Mm -hmm. prepared for a video now i know exactly every step what i need to do and if you feel that you need to try something else Mm -hmm. i think I mean, a template does help and it does save time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you should always be trying to do something new, you know, because sometimes when you do something new, it just doesn't work. And then, you know, but other times you do something new and you're like, holy cow, that's actually really good. And that really helps. I'm going to stick with that. Mm -hmm. But you won't know until you try it. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so when is this uh, video that you're working on? When is it coming out? It's uh, Wednesday. So this Wednesday. So in like three days. Mm. And I've always posted on like right. Wednesdays um, for a lot of reasons. One is that mm. there's this program called TubeBuddy that is like a, a neat yeah. kind of plugin that gives you like information and stuff. But for the longest time, it's like a Wednesday at noon is the best time when you should post. So I just stuck with that. And I think having like a scheduled time to post helps because now I can actually get ahead on videos and it won't take me a month to make the next one. I'm already script writing the next one right now. Like I started yesterday. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's it does help, I feel. Yeah. To schedule as much w- as Was you. it like that uh, from the start or is it something? No, no, it's something I, I developed it over time really because... For a while, I just posted whenever I had like a video idea and then I transitioned. I kept transitioning from like posting whenever I had a video to making weekly videos. I don't do weekly videos anymore because I know the kind of content that I want to make now. And because of that, it takes longer, right? And so Mm. this year for sure, I want it to be quality over quantity because I've finally like found my style and writing and Mm. everything. And so I want to double down on that. And I have so far, and I've been really proud of the videos that I've made this year. So that's been really good. Do you see uh, a difference in the views from now when you're posting like uh, more on a regular basis, the same time every, every Wednesday? It's tough. It, it's really tough to gauge. I still get like the same amount, if not more views than if I posted weekly. Mm-hmm. But it's also weird because I'm I'm talking about these very specific things where like if I can find a Reddit for it, I'll post it there. And then that's usually why a video of mine blows up. Mm-hmm. This is a video about Hive Swap that has like 30,000 views because I posted it in like the Reddit and that made it blow up. And then it kept getting recommended to a bunch of people. Um, so it just really depends on the video. It's tough to gauge. I don't even like the other thing is like, I don't do it for views. I've kind of not given up, but just realized that the views don't matter in a way, especially if you're a smaller Mm -hmm. creator, it's about providing value as much as you possibly can and building and just maintaining your community that you already have. Cause sure I could be like, I'm not at a million subscribers yet, but I have a discord full of like amazing people that 
I just love to talk to and they like love what I do and support me and it's just great. So. Yeah. And I think it's a, a really good uh, mindset to have uh, mm -hmm. when you're creating stuff on YouTube, just to focus on uh, mm -hmm. what do I want to do and what do I, what am I good at and actually communicating with, uh, with the viewers as well. I was actually, I was watching, I think it was your latest video uh, mm -hmm. and I was going down in the comments and see how many comments that you had replied to. Mm -hmm. I usually do that because I'm, I'm curious about uh, yeah. the guy that is posting mm -hmm. and I couldn't like, I couldn't find a comment that where you ha haven't replied to mm -hmm. the other per yeah, that's, person. That's my policy. So, I always reply to every single comment, yeah. whether negative or not, it's just like, <laughs> which, which brings up. Yeah, yeah. that's very important. I, I agree, especially because I feel like a lot of people don't do it. So it's kind of mm. nice when it's like you're the one channel that's like always on that. I literally literally have like YouTube mm. studio on my phone. So that way I get a notification when everybody, when anybody leaves a comment so I can reply like instantly. And they're like, wow, you were replied yeah. quickly. I'm like, yeah, because I get a notification. <laughs> but, <Right. laughs> but yeah, I think it's really important for sure, yeah. especially if they're not a part of the Discord, you know. So like that, it gives the uh, the connection more mm. strength, you know, so. And it's also, they put time, they invest time to, mm -hmm. to comment instead of doing yeah, something exactly. else. So Exactly. That's why I never try to just reply with like one word if I can. But it also depends on the comment, because mm. if they leave like paragraphs, I'll try to like dissect every single paragraph because it's like. Yeah. And you'd be a jerk to just say, okay, or like, cool. It's just, yeah. that wouldn't be very respectful of their time. It's like, so it mm. really depends on the comment, but I think that's very important and more people need to do it. Bigger YouTubers, mm. it's tough to, I get it, but that's kind of like one of the perks of being a smaller creator is that you actually can and they have the time. So I get it. Mm. Uh, I was thinking about when I, I looked at your channel and some of your videos that you put a lot of time into editing. I see like all the small details there. There is like maximum two seconds and then there's some graphic or some sound effect or something happening. Uh, so <laughs> I felt when I was watching is like I was interested all the way. I, mm. I never got bored of anything. So uh, is it... Oh. Uh, is it something that you have like learned when creating vi videos on like how to make the the content and how to work with scripts uh, to make it more interesting and to get people to watch watch it all the way through? It's funny you bring this up because every single time somebody brings up my editing, I always think of this one guy in particular who I'm not going to name, who always criticizes me for over editing which I laugh <laughs> at because it's just like, oh, is all of the time and effort that I'm putting into not worth it? Which isn't true because I shouldn't yeah. base it on one person's opinion anyways, but it's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I'm laughing because, okay, wow. <laughs> okay, I have to give context now. The guy who was just talking about literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to name names. That was too perfect, sorry. <laughs> I love him. He's a great, nice, good guy. He makes music. Great. Uh, anyway, it's great with like, going live. Oh, that was funny. No, uh, but anyways, <laughs> like for a while, it was about keeping audience retention because I used to watch a lot of like YouTube advice stuff, where it's like, oh, you got to keep the audience's retention. You got to check graphs and stuff. And I was like, and of course, like at the time, I cared so much about that because I was trying to grow. <laughs> Joe Ben, yeah, it's completely mm -hmm. true. Yeah. But yeah, because at the time I was so focused on like growing my channel and posting weekly and schedule. And I was just, I was probably a little too obsessed at the time instead of just focusing on like the content itself, which I still was, but it was just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But the audience retention was like the one thing that kept stabbing at my mind which is kind of why I started doing all these like zoom ins and effects and overlays and everything. And it just got to a point where it's like, that's kind of how I edit. Like, and I just, and yeah. I also enjoy editing too. 
So the longer it takes, the better, in my opinion, in a way, because then I'm like a lot more proud of it if I put more effort into it, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I also have a lot of different creative influences, and I know that it's it's not not everybody like sees it, but like to me, I see all like the creative influences here and there, um, mm -hmm. which makes like which makes up my style in a way. And so, I love to edit, yeah, and then audience retention. That was what I was focusing focusing on. And then after a while, I just I stopped caring because I realized that it if it sometimes affected the video in ways I didn't want it to. Cause sometimes I want mm -hmm. scenes where it's like not much is happening. So I like it conveys a certain like emotion or something like that specifically. Mm -hmm. So then I stopped caring about it. And then I, then my creativity, I felt like was more open in a way where yeah. I have this series called cheapskate Chronicles where it's like a minute. The first minute is like, this storytelling skit kind of thing. Cause I want to do an overarching thing with that eventually. But if I was so worried about audience retention, I probably wouldn't have done it, but because it was like way slower than like what I normally do, it was just like, mm -hmm. I kind of had to throw that to the side for like creative purposes. But the, the other thing with this is like, if I'm not interested in my video, why would anybody else be? which is why I, I go to the extents that I do with the editing because I have to enjoy right. the video. Otherwise it's like, what's the point, you know, but I don't, I don't want to be so like narcissistic about it either where it's like, I'm making a video like four other people, obviously, cause those are your mm -hmm. viewers, but it's gotta be a balance. You can't just be so self-indulgent in yourself. You should, it, it's a tough, tough balance sometimes, but it's like, you have to enjoy it. That's why you're doing it. But at the same time, you know, other people are going to watch it. So it's like, mm. why not put in the time? You know, you don't want to waste people's time. So I hope that answered your question. I kind of went mm. everywhere. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. But I think, I think it's interesting with the balance that you're talking about, because mm. uh, I can recognize that uh, those thoughts that I, uh, I want to create something that like I can be proud of and that I would watch and that I would like. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like if someone that is watching also likes it, that's like a bonus mm -hmm. uh, instead of just trying to adapt all the time, just yeah. figuring out what do you want to see and then just make that mm -hmm. content. And I think yeah. even if I do the things that I want to do, I can still show the respect to the people watching by mm -hmm. putting time into doing it like professional with good gear and put the time into editing and write a good uh, caption and title and all of that stuff yeah it's, it's yeah it's just interesting because it's like it's this weird conversation of like you're doing it like you initially did it because you enjoyed it and then you kept doing it so much that it like draws attention. And so mm -hmm. when you get to that point where it's like a lot of eyes are on it, it's like you got to make sure you always know the why of what you're doing, which is very mm -hmm. important. I feel like a lot of channels don't have that level for some reason. Like it's always, it's always about like eyes on them, you know? And so mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't want to like be that, you know? And so I was like, eventually I figured out like the why and it's like, well, providing value any way I can basically. And so informing people about amazing things on the internet, I think is a good way to do that, mm. especially because the negative, the internet, it, it depends on where you look, but the internet itself can be very negative as shown by like all these commentary yeah. channels that blow up every single day for being negative and talking about trending topics which is hilarious because I do the exact opposite. And that's why my channel isn't as big as it is. Cause I'm not, I don't like to be negative. Like I'm a, when something is like wrong, I'll point it out, but that's not the point of the video. Right? Like I, I always like to be objective with my videos, but the whole point is finding the good in the internet instead of the bad, like a lot of people do. So. W would you prefer to like point out something that people don't know about or something that people 
that is already big that people know about? I mean, my thought process is if everybody's already making a video about it, why should I? If everything's already been mm. said by that point, you know? Plus, every sure. single time I've tried a trending topic thing, I'm always late on the trend and mm. I never in, and I never enjoyed it. Like there was this weird stage in my channel where I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I created this very stupid. Uh, this was before my analysis videos, but this was like mm -hmm. a fidget spinner trailer where it was like a Rocky esque type thing where I was like working out. And then it was just, it was this mm -hmm. random thing. And I look at it now and I'm like, I was just trying to do a trending thing and it just didn't work. And so after mm -hmm. that point, I kind of, kind of gave up on like doing trending things. Cause it's like, it's not me. It's not what I like to do. And it just shows that I'm trying to get views, you know? Mm. So I'd, I'd rather talk about things that nobody's talking about rather than things that people are already talking about. And it's so funny because these times where I've talked about things and made analytical videos on things that nobody else has done, those videos have actually blown mm. up because nobody else has done that. Mm. <laughs> so I'm the kind of the person who's right. like the, the starter in some ways, because that was the same way for high yeah. swap. That was the same way for Tally Hall. That will be the same way. No, I don't know. Probably not for the video I'm working on now. But then uh, Melanie Ahern, that YouTuber, nobody else has made an analytical video on her. Just stuff like that, you know. Because mm -hmm. I think, yeah, making new content that other people haven't made, I think is important, especially to stand out for sure. Mm. When speaking about... Uh trending topics have you you've probably heard about uh, backpack kid yeah yeah i have <laughs> did you see when he was uh, uh at uh, vayner media talking with gary i know he did but i don't think i saw the video i know that he had had right. an interaction with gary but i don't know anything beyond that yeah. cuz i was i was thinking about that now when we talk about trending topics and he basically said that he was just like uh, uh, being silly or having fun doing mm -hmm. some kind of dance and then it went viral mm -hmm. and i think that's like if you want to make it long term and you want mm -hmm. to get like success over time that's the the way to be uh, to actually grow if something that you already enjoy doing is trending or goes yeah. viral instead of trying to like chase that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the other, yeah. The other thing with trending topics is that if I were to blow up by doing a trending topic thing, like that's not what I enjoy doing, you know, mm. so I'd be, I'd be blown up from this thing that I'm not like the most proud of. So it's like, why would I want that? Yeah. You know, I'd rather have a bunch of eyes on something that I'm truly proud of rather than like trying to get views, you know? Yeah. I agree. I think that's the other, the, the other portion. So. Yeah. So how has your, it, it's interesting to ask this because you have like 1500 subscribers and I know that, like the step from going from hundred to thousand can actually be one of the like hardest step for a YouTuber mm. uh, because you're so small and you you yeah. want to reach a thousand and you want to, as we talked about earlier, maybe you're looking too much into the statistics uh, and the metrics in the beginning uh, and then trying to figure out what you stand for and what you want to do. So how has your like, uh, your approach to making videos has changed from when you had 100 subscribers to when you had 1,000 subscribers? Mm. Is it like more focused on, on what you want to do instead of looking at the metrics or? I'll be honest, I never look at the metrics anymore. <laughs> I just don't because right. I know that it influences me always negatively and not and i know that my channel could probably grow more if i did but i know that whenever i look at it it always influences my creativity which isn't what i want right because like i know what i'm doing with editing like i know my style i know it's good 
obviously there's always room for improvement, but it's just, it always influences me. Ever since I watched a video by Bobby Burns called uh, Statistics Kill, or it's uh, Analytics Kill Creativity or something like that, it just opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, he's right. Yeah, I'm guilty of a lot of that. And so I never liked to, to, to look at the analytics because it's not like why I do it. For, I don't like do it for the views, but like the uh, perspective between a hundred and a thousand subscribers, I don't know, but I want to say I do know because I feel like after I got at, after I got past like a hundred, no, a thousand subscribers, I started figuring out the why. It wasn't instantaneous; mm -hmm. it took a while, but. I got to a thousand subscribers because of the hive swap video blowing up. And mm -hmm. so I was trying to figure out why. And because I figured out why I was like, Oh, that's why. And so I, I was still doing like whatever at that point, but I think the perspective changed over time where it's like, Oh, this is like the most different thing I've done so far. And so more so gradually, it wasn't just like, oh, I hit a thousand subscribers. I know what I want to do. It was just a real, a small realization that led to what I'm doing now. Cause I don't know, actually, mm -hmm. that's not true. I, I want to say that was the first one I did like that, but I did one before about Batman and Piderman. And that was like the first one uh, that kind of blew up not as big as the hive swap one but mm. i mean i'm not gonna lie when i hit a thousand subscribers i was like super happy but at the same time it's like it's not really what i do it it's a perk it's nice to look at every once in a while mm. but I, i'm not focused on it really so i guess it took like a couple of years to mm -hmm. un until you reached 1000 yeah and and, and you still felt then that you you didn't know 100% what your niche is going to be. Well, yeah. Uh, the, the niche niche talk. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. I, I've tried. I've tried so hard to stay in one niche niche, whatever mm. you want to call it. It doesn't work for my channel. Uh. Because what I do is I go into these niches, different niches, make a video, mm. and then go to another niche, make a video about that. That's what mm. I do. And so I literally can't stay in one. Um, right. It's just funny, but like, I know that's a lot. That's the advice that a lot of uh, YouTube experts give. And it's just like, I literally can't do that. That's, that's not how I work. Besides, if I make an entire video about something and it takes me a month, I don't want to think about mm -hmm. it anymore. I want to move on to a different project that's not about the same topic, you know? Yeah. And so... It doesn't work for me, but I also get these people in these niches that are like, this video is amazing. Thank you for making it kind of thing, which, which mm -hmm. always makes my day. And it's so great. And that actually brings up something else about, about these specific videos. There's been a bunch of people that I've made these videos about where they'll like see the video that I made about them. And they're like, this is amazing. Thank you for making it kind of thing. It's happened yeah. with hive swap. It's happened with, uh, Melanie and Ahern. It's happened with, uh, Oh, it happened with blimey cow. It happened with, mm -hmm. oh, I can't remember what else. I've made like seven or eight gems of the internet. So I can't remember. <laughs> uh, but the point is like, it, oh, Chuzzle. I made a video about Chuzzle, like the original Chuzzle. Mm -hmm. And the guy from Raptosoft, which is like the developer, he uh, <laughs> he basically gave me a Chuzzle 2 ad-free because of that video. Because I made a video about his old game. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow. All right. So it's just the fact of like, subscribers don't matter. It's providing value, really. It's mm -hmm. like... They weren't looking at my subscriber count. They were watching my video that I put hours of effort in, you know? Yeah. So I just think it's really cool how I've had a lot of those situations happen 
despite my subscriber count and it's just like mm -hmm. it's 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 really cool whenever that does happen so yeah that's like uh, one of the things that i have that i've really learned from uh, from gary to provide more value than you can expect in return yeah for and sure. as you as you described just reaching out to someone uh, that is appreciating what you do and the hours to, that you have put into it mm -hmm. uh, that's like that's more worth than uh, mm -hmm. every exactly. subscriber yeah. mm -hmm. number so yeah. Exactly. Um, do you have like any any tools that you use? You mentioned uh, TubeBuddy and like posting, finding. Um, uh, I don't know what is called topics on Reddit, where you can post it. Oh well, okay. that uh, tools as in like sites or programs like editing software or. Yeah, it can it can be sites and it can be uh, like things that you uh, like small things that you uh, add to both the editing and the when you're publishing and when you're sharing okay. that you see that it All has right. that has made uh, good results. Oh, um, okay. So to answer the first one, I use a. Uh, Hit Film 4 Express, which isn't actually true because I updated it, so now it's Hit Film Express 12, which is mm -hmm. an amazing free editing software, if you can believe it. I You can do so much with it, it's ridiculous. It's I've used huh. it for so many years, and I'm in this weird bubble because everybody's like, do you use Premiere or Sony Vegas? And I'm like, yeah. Hit Film Express 12, and they're like, what? Because like or final cut. Exactly, right. And so it's like <laughs> I haven't needed to move because I've been able to do everything in this free software. So it's like I don't see a right. point. You know? Although it's not industry standard, like I don't think mm. that matters. Like as long as the end product looks good, you know. But so I use that uh to make thumbnails. I use GIMP. I don't use Photoshop because I use a lot of free mm. stuff. I always have, because like when you're starting out, you try to get any free thing you can. Like at this yeah. point, it makes sense for me to buy like Premiere, but I just haven't needed it. Plus, it's expensive. That's a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. But so I use GIMP to make thumbnails. I use Hit Film for Express uh, to make my videos. Uh, my brother and his friend helped uh, me build this computer that I'm using now, which I love. Mm -hmm. I don't know any of the specs because I'm not that geeky <laughs> which is why yes. i had them for me but i paid them to build it for me i bought the parts but yeah. that's really helped getting a new computer i have this at 2020 mic with a euphoria umc 22 audio interface and this arm mm -hmm. helped for sure with the audio quality uh and then i got new keyboard and mouse with this computer so that's the uh like the equipment and like the technical side. I don't think there's anything else for that. Um, but do you have any specific light? I have this lamp. All right. <laughs> I, have, I have this lamp. I have this desk lamp right here. Oh, right. I have a, a ring light over here. That's what I forgot. Mm. I use that. I have like three lights on whenever I record. It gets hot in my room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah the lighting is very important lighting sound like it, it's important for sure uh for the longest time i didn't have a ring light i'm like i don't need a ring light then i used it in one of my videos and i'm like oh yeah i needed a ring light <laughs> so, yeah so are you happy about the uh, the ring light because i've been thinking about maybe buying that myself yeah i am it, it's it's helpful for sure because then you get that even lighting which does help like on your face mm. for sure it's like you don't need it but if you're looking to upgrade like i would definitely do that especially because you could put your camera like in the ring light so you can just have mm. it sitting there it's it's pretty nice 
and then I and then I sometimes use just the tripod, which is actually from uh, our old camcorder. But the tripod still works, so I haven't needed to buy a tripod. <laughs> so I just use that and it works great. And I th think that's it for equipment. What I what I do sometimes is, yeah, I do post my videos on Reddit, depending on the topic and the subreddit. I don't do it for all of them. Because when you make videos about small YouTubers, like there's no subreddit for them. So it really depends on the topic. Mm -hmm. uh, but say for a video like HiveSwap, I would post it on like any HiveSwap subreddit I can find. Uh, and that, that's kind of how it blew up because of all that traffic from there. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I always do is I always distribute my videos basically everywhere. Uh, Instagram, yeah. Twitter, Snapchat um where else discord i'm in a bunch of discord servers mm -hmm. uh facebook, facebook groups i have a facebook page and then facebook groups are extremely important i'm part of like mm -hmm. 60 to 80 youtuber facebook groups so i post them there um 60 to 80? yeah i'm estimating but it takes a long time <laughs> but what i do <laughs> is I do I do something that not a lot of people do, which is I think why it gains a lot of attention. But what I do is mm -hmm. I take like a 30 to like a 30 second clip from my video. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, I'll have like this end card where it's like the title of the video on top. And it's like click the link below for the full video. And then it's like a picture of the thumbnail at the end. Mm -hmm. This is I'm very extensive with this. So and then in the actual post, you have the video, but then you have like the, the subheading that I'll do for the video and then like the actual title. And then it's uh, click here for the full video and then the link below that. And then mm -hmm. I copy paste that to like 80 different YouTuber groups. And my video stands right. out. A lot of people just post the link. I'm going to this extent where it's like, I'm showing you a clip of the video. I'm telling you about yeah. it. It's like, it's all right yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, I've gotten a few subscribers from that, but just like, I'm really well known in those because of that. I've met some mm -hmm. people through these groups because there's a few people that do like the same thing and they stand out. And now I'm like YouTuber yeah. friends with them and it's great. And so yeah. a lot of people, ugh, I swear. You just need to stand out with this kind of thing, you know? Mm. Um, but yeah, I take that clip and I post that clip to Snapchat, Instagram, uh, the Facebook page as well. Uh, the just No, I can't do it on Discord, but I can post the link. Uh, what else? Yeah. And then I haven't been doing this recently, but I also have like... A, medium blog type thing where i'll like post the script mm -hmm. there and make it like a blog i haven't been doing that uh, recently but I need to, yeah. mm -hmm. so it's like yeah you, i take this four page script it's like well i can make it an article basically yeah. uh so that's another way to, to distribute i i do like gary v's thing about not staying on one platform too which is why mm -hmm. like me youtube is my main hub but that's why i'm like always very active on instagram because i do like instagram a lot I just wish that a lot more things would happen with Instagram, like uh, uploading videos from your computer to Instagram. That'd be really nice. But no, yeah. what I have to do with Instagram, I hate Instagram for this. What I have to do is I have to take <laughs> the clip, I have to email it to myself, download it on my phone, yeah. and then post it to Instagram through that. It's obnoxious, but yeah. <laughs> it, it helps the distribution. So it's like, it's kind of worth it. So, but yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't do the distribution part and that's what's uh, making them mm. suffer. It's like you, if you yeah. post a video on YouTube, you can't expect YouTube to push it. Like you have to push it yourself through different avenues, mm. but it's also the fact of like not being spammy about it either. So there's always a, a way to do it. Like instead of like, Hey, watch my video, just like inform people about it without seeming like, mm. Hey, like, and subscribe kind of thing. Mm. and also time yeah. and place is also important because i don't just post this 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 video clip anywhere like i'm going to like specific youtuber facebook groups where it's like that's what they do you know like mm. i don't just post it in 
like everywhere. So it's just finding yeah. the right places. Yeah, I think that is uh, two things that are real important about what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to to share it on a lot of places and to be mm -hmm. creative on how you can mm -hmm. uh, like uh, package it for that place. Mm -hmm. And also trying to be like, if you share it in Facebook group, tr uh, trying to have it relevant to the actual group and and make sure it provides value for for the people in the group so it's not just feels like spamming yeah uh, but it was it was a creative idea with posting the script on medium mm -hmm. yeah yeah i've been trying to do more with that but i'm trying to figure out like uh, things like that as well uh, recently yeah. i've started to post like uh, thumbnails of my um my tutorials on pinterest and then i link to the video in the in the description yeah so just trying to find like new platforms that i'm not yeah. using right now i see people do that where it's like they post the thumbnail even still it's mm -hmm. like that still doesn't stand out to me it's like mm -hmm. there you got some people who do it but just the video clip, especially because Facebook, I think, auto plays videos as well. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It depends on where you are, but that's the other factor to it as well. Um, yeah. And that's the thing, right? The other thing with the video clip is that people can, like, judge whether or not they actually want to click the link, you know? So it's yeah. like they see it, and then it's like, oh, I'm actually interested. And sometimes yeah. what I'll do it. Sometimes, sometimes what I'll do is I'll cut the clip at the end, right? It's about like, I'm about to say something. So that way it entices mm. people to act. Like, sometimes it depends, but like, uh -huh. I don't know. It also like, I just think it's funny. I think it's, it intrigues people. It's like, wait, what is he going to say? Mm. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but so Joe Ben says, uh, what you can't upload on Instagram from a computer seems a bit behind in the times. I know because Instagram is very mobile based, mm. which they need to fix <laughs> because you could, I feel like yeah. I really believe this Instagram could be the next YouTube, but they would, they would only have to do a few mm -hmm. key things and then they could be like the next YouTube. If YouTube goes down, I believe that Instagram will be like the thing truly. Cause you already have mm -hmm. so many people posting videos on Instagram anyways and getting popular from Instagram. So it's like, yeah. And Instagram like has been getting better. Like they keep implementing these features that are really good, like voice messages on Instagram DMs, which I love so much mm. because I I've I've used that a lot with uh my friends and it just helps so much. Instead of just typing yeah. out like 15 paragraphs, you can just say it, you know. Yeah. Just little things like that. So are you using uh, IGTV as well? <sighs> no, <laughs> I <laughs> don't like IGTV. I know it was it was a big thing, and then it kind of died down. I, mm -hmm. it's weird. It's tough to do. I mean, what I could start doing is posting my Thursday thought series from my extra channel to IGTV. I guess, but other than that, I don't know what else I would do because. My videos would be extremely tough to push to IGTV. Uh, I've always wanted to do like mm. uh, an Instagram specific thing with IGTV, but I'd have no clue what that would be because I really don't have the time for that either. That's the other thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I feel that that's a challenge as well to like, how can I create more content, but still uh, do it in the like same amount of time yeah because you have to like you have to prioritize also what you're going to create yeah that's fair that's very and true. like one thing that i uh that i've learned from a friend recently uh, he posted something on his instagram story and then there was like a couple of stories and then he saved that as like one video clip and post that clip on IGTV. Hmm. So I did that like with two videos recently 
uh, I think that can be one solution, uh, an effective way to post something there. Because huh. then you can like tell a story by by using a lot of short stories and make it into a longer yeah, story. Yeah, it's already in the same like aspect ratio, so it would actually. Yeah. Huh. I like that. That's clever. I would have to look into that. Because like I'm always posting something on my Instagram story. Like I always have something there. Um, I also have a cool strategy for Instagram that I don't think a lot of people have been using. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like the highlight button on Instagram Mm -hmm. on your, I see a lot of people use that for like, here's my YouTube, here's here's my Twitter. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. What I do it for instead is I use it as a place to document because stories are gone in 24 hours. However, if you save them as a highlight, they're there forever. So it's a way to kind of vlog slash document right there. And Mm -hmm. I document documentation is very important. It's tough to do it on my main channel, which is why I'm doing it so heavy on like Instagram and my side channel, right? Because like I know what my main channel is and it just wouldn't fit on the main channel for like quality and style wise. But yeah, yeah, so that's why I'm very like heavy on Instagram and Instagram stories and stuff like that. Mm. Plus, it's just nice to pull out my phone and be able to like record one of my thoughts and just put it on my story, you know? It's very easy. Yeah. Then pulling out my camera, having to record it, make sure the microphone mm. is working, make sure the lighting's good and the and and everything, make sure that yeah. the ISO isn't too high, make sure uh, I put it on my tripod. That's just too much work for like a 30 yeah. second video. So it's kind of nice yeah. when uh I don't even do it that much on Twitter. Instagram is so easy for it. Uh mm. I'll do the occasional video on Twitter, but not usually. Instagram is just I, I it's like one of it's like my favorite social media platform. I, I don't want to say besides YouTube because YouTube doesn't seem like a social media platform. It feels like I don't know. It's technically social media, but it's all videos. So yeah. I never considered it a social media site, especially in the state that YouTube is in now. You know. Mm-hmm. So, I've been thinking about that actually. Is it called a social media site, or is it like a search engine, or is it like something in between? Well, you could argue that Instagram <laughs> is a search engine, right? <laughs> like it has a search bar. But now they're doing stories as well. So yeah, which I'm salty about because I still don't have YouTube Stories, and I've wanted that for the longest of time. So now I'm in a battle with YouTube yeah. trying to get YouTube Stories because it's so important. <laughs> because that way I could stop documenting on Instagram and document directly mm-hmm. on YouTube, which is important because yeah. my good stuff is right there instead of having to push right. people to Instagram, which not everybody goes to Instagram. You have a few people. Yeah. But as long, if you can, if you try to make it not that complicated, not, well, not complicated. If you try to, re- you need to like reduce the steps basically. Mm-hmm. Like if, if I can have everything on YouTube, that'd be nice. Instead of pushing everybody to Instagram, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. And that that's harder than a lot of mm-hmm. people think to make people change platform to watch something. Yeah. Well, not not necessarily change platforms, but just add a different avenue for content. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I really love YouTube. YouTube is is great, and it's t- it would be tough to do what I'm doing now on a different platform especially when uh when uh youtube and stuff like caps videos at like a certain time stamp you know whereas youtube it's like you can upload whatever watch time you know yeah so yeah have you tried like uh vimeo or other uh video uploading sites i I don't I don't think so. I tried to do get on the uh Facebook creators thing that they were pushing mm-hmm. a while back and they rejected me. <laughs> so like <sighs> yeah. But I think that's because it it was uh 
it's not the content that they want kind of thing where it's like the uh, content that they want is like all original, all like Buzzfeed type yeah. stuff, you know? Um, yeah. So I want, I was going to try uh vid me, but I think it shut down. So it's like, Oh, well, but I'm always like open to like different platforms mm. whenever I see a new one. I haven't been looking recently, but if I can share my video more places, why not? Right. Yeah. Cause you never know like what platform is going to, mm -hmm. to grow yeah. and what is going to be the most popular in five years. <laughs> uh, right. It has sure. changed a lot. If you look back like five years back mm -hmm. from now. Yeah. It's very true. Like Vine, for example, came and left. <laughs> What's the same Vine? Year, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you haven't tried it? It's like no, I, I, no, no, no. I was, I was kidding. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, uh, no. But I think it's funny how, like, whenever these social media platforms die, they always migrate to YouTube. It happened. Mm -hmm. Vine uh, happened to Musically, you know, and so it's just, it's just, and then they've made yeah. careers because because they switched platforms, you know. And so yeah. it's just like, it's crazy. But then it influences this platform and the people that were on this from the start, it sometimes negatively impacts them. And so it's just like, oh, yeah. well, I don't know. It's interesting. I've written down one thing that I want to mention before we end. Uh, you did a video about Gary Vaynerchuk. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I saw when I watched your Instagram that you actually been to Vayner Media in Gary's office. No, that wasn't you. Or no, that was oh, my cause... friend, YouTube friend Emarius. I edited the video for him. Ah, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, I was unsure. <laughs> like yeah. I watched the video like a couple of times, but is it him uh... or is it someone else? <laughs> No, that was my my YouTube buddy. Right. Yeah. I wish that'd be cool, but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But do you watch uh, a lot of his stuff? <sighs> okay, I I I used to watch and listen to his podcast like on the daily. I haven't been watching it as much simply because of like how mm -hmm. busy I am now and like I already know mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Partially I watched yeah. him cuz it's like I was trying to figure out like what I wanted to do kind of thing in a way. Mm. Cause at the time I was a janitor <laughs> cleaning floors mm. in three different places. And it's just, I would always listen to his podcast that my YouTube friend, M rise, he actually sent uh, me a couple of Gary V stuff. And then I got hooked into him. Then I realized what I actually wanted to do and then did that. But mm. like, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm open to like his content. Like I do really like it. It's just like time. You know, yeah. I haven't been able to listen to podcasts in forever because of like what I do now. And it's just it's very difficult. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I do like his content. I mostly see his content on like Instagram than anything because I'm on there a lot. And so yeah. which is nice because it's not only on YouTube, right? So, yeah. And it's hard to follow along as well because he's like mm -hmm. posting so much content yeah. also. Yeah, but he also on, has like all the platforms. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know how many they are now, but I heard like 30 or 40 people or yeah. something. That surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But it works. So, yeah. I and mean... I, th I think, as you said, it's the, it's good content for when you are in that position when you're trying to like figure out which route to go and what mm -hmm. you want to do exactly uh, that's when it's most valuable i think things mm -hmm. you are talking about yeah um yeah do you have any like uh, any things that you want to share like any advice on something that you do in your workflow to make it make it easier when you're editing and or stuff like that. I think 
to-do lists are extremely important that not a lot of people Mm -hmm. use. I used to not have one for a while and it just, I'm a lot more organized now because I'm a person who, who is in his own head a lot of the time. And so having these to-do lists, I literally have like a content creation calendar that I have so that way I can see it in front of me instead of having it in my head. So I think to-do lists and just specific calendars for creativity helps a lot. Um, that's one big thing that I feel like anybody could use whether you're being creative or not, just like being able to see it and then get it done. And then having this Mm -hmm. feeling of accomplishment when you finally have everything done is really nice. So yeah, I highly recommend like to-do lists of any kind, really. Do you just write it down in a document or do you have... Uh, I have app for it. I have, two, I have Splendu on my phone, and then I have just like a normal to do list on my computer, like a programmer application. But I have two separate ones. I have one for my responsibilities, which is on my phone, and then one for all my creativity, which is on my computer, because I do all my creativity here on my computer. So I, I like to have it separate. You don't have to do it that way, but it just helps my workflow Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, when you are like when you're posting a video and you are figuring out the title and the the tags and the keywords do you usually do it after you upload it or do you decide all of that uh, like before you even write the script I write the script first because otherwise I don't Mm. know what like, okay. I obviously know the topic, right? But that's about it before Mm. I script, right? I have to script, right? So that way I know like the direction of the video and like where it's going and what like the main points are. Um, so yeah, I did that with this video that I'm uploading Wednesday where it's like, I have the title. It's like the topic of the video and then semicolon. And then, then it's like the two main points of the video right there. But I, I wouldn't have Mm. known that until like I I wrote the script. So the title and the thumbnail, Mm. I, I, I I do basically after I finish the entire video, same with the, the keywords, the description is usually like a few paragraphs or a paragraph from the script that like explains Mm. the video. Uh, Keywords, I do like the the topic of the video and then similar phrases like the people I mentioned Mm -hmm. in the video or the uh, the things that relate to the topic that I'm talking about, basically. But I don't do single words. Mm -hmm. I do like key phrases. Um, All right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Is the script like written down word word to word, or is it more like a list of things that you are going to go through? No, the script is like uh, like paragraphs, kind of like an essay in a way. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you do you usually stick to the script, or can you like improvise and change things? No, I have to stick to the script. If I'm spending hours and days on the script, I I want to say the things that I'm writing. Just one reason I write a script because I want to know exactly what to say. There are a few situations mm. that I like. I sometimes try something different just to see how it works. But for the most part, the reason I like take so long to script write is because I want to know exactly what to say and what specific thoughts I want to convey at that moment. You know. Mm. So. If, if you would like uh, um, to describe in percentage how much time you spend on each thing, like how much time do you spend on script, recording, edit, and distribution? Okay. The, the recording and distribution take the least amount of time, so that's probably like 20. Yeah, both of those would be like 20. No, I would say the distribution and the actual recording will be like 
ten percent of it, ten or twenty percent, mm. probably. And I'll go fifteen each, so that's thirty percent for that. And then right. the actually, whoa, no, total would be ten percent. So that's ten percent with both of those, and then editing would be mm. like seventy percent, and then writing would be like twenty percent. Right. I would say because editing takes me the longest, but not as long as writing right. the script. Um, but it also depends on like how much I write per day as well. Because mm -hmm. yesterday I wrote like a page of script. So. But editing definitely takes me the longest. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, so like one page of script, how many hours is that usually? For a page of, I don't even know. Uh, I'm being probably, really like detailed here. I know, probably like an hour or two, I would say. Right. It also depends on like what the topic is and how detailed I am. So it can vary, mm. but. Because when I'm like recording these vlogs, I have tried different ways of preparing. Like in the beginning, I just uh, clicked record and started recording. Mm -hmm. uh, and pretty quickly, I noticed that I had to prepare more and mm -hmm. write down some topics that I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, then I started doing script, but I noticed that it's hard to like, for me, it was hard to write and uh, to read the script and still uh, trying to be like make it personal and trying to make it like natural. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I like yeah. I went back one step and just wrote down like these are the things I want to talk about, and mm -hmm. then I yeah. like kind of improvise a little bit when mm -hmm. I record it. So yeah. I mean, as long as you figured out like how you work with that kind of thing, then that's good. Mm. You know, like what I do doesn't work for everybody. You know, it just depends on your strengths and what you're good at. You know. Mm. Yeah, I think it can can be different for different people. Mm, that's true. Okay, but I think I'm going to let you go, but. Thanks, thank you so much for joining this live. Uh, I did, I did get a lot of interesting answers and things that I'm going to uh, to try out and to implement myself. Uh, so I will also uh, go back and watch this episode and write down in the comments uh, like timestamps so people can find right. different things that we talked about. Um, All right, so. Yeah, and if you want to send your like uh, account names on your social media platforms, I can put it put them down in the description so people right. can find you. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do that right after. And uh, yeah, perfect. And I think that's about it. All right. So yeah, thank that's you so great. much for joining. No problem. And for the people that are watch, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope to see you in the next episode as well. So, bye-bye.